Okay, a pleasant morning, a pleasant afternoon, a pleasant evening to everyone, whatever time you're watching this asynchronous video. So I just want to greet you um, a good day uh, to everybody. So for this discussion, we will be discussing your laboratory information system. So this is already the third topic um, on your syllabus. So we're actually nearing the end of the prelim um, coverage. So hopefully you'll be listening to our discussion for today. So laboratory informatics, again, good morning to everybody. Okay, so before I proceed, let me just check if my recording, my audio, and also my camera are all working well. So let's get started. So for this morning, um, we're going to talk about laboratory information system. So some of these topics are actually, um, are going to be, uh, review for you guys, especially for those of you who still remember your HIS. So your Health Information System for Medical Laboratory Science was actually a primer already of this discussion that we're going to have for today. Although um, the discussion for today is mer merely um, a review, okay, a reiteration of the importance of laboratory information system when it comes to the clinical chemistry section. So if you are following with me, this is not found on your bishop, but I would want you to proceed to your um, to your Henry's. Okay, if you have already have a copy of your Henry's, you can actually find this in chapter 11. And I am currently and will be starting at one page uh, 132. Okay, page 132. So laboratory information system, that is our topic for today. So let's get started and let's move to the next slide. So laboratory information, uh, laboratory information system, uh, simply your information system refers to the empirically, uh, refers empirically to the hardware, the software, and also the connectivity design to perform data management functions. So as you all know, um, uh, basic when it comes to your computer, you have your software, you have your hardware, but most importantly, you also have the connectivity in which um, this hardware and software are integrated with one another that allow us to perform data management function. So when we say data management function, we're not just merely talking about um, curating or storing a particular set of data in the laboratory, but also how we manage them. So as you all as you all know, and hopefully all of you still remember, when it comes to data management, we also pertain onto how we were able to use up the data that we gathered so that it would benefit the laboratory or the hospital in general. So like for example, I collected data about the satisfaction of your patients, then I would be able to know what to improve and what to retain, okay, when it comes to the services. So in your um laboratory information system, we're actually focusing the use of information system in the laboratory. So most of the time, okay, most of the time, the laboratory information system are commonly used, okay, in the communication of different analyzers. So, sir, what do you mean by communication with different analyzer? Take, for example, I am the medical technologist. I'll be putting in my specimen into the machine, and my way of com giving commands to the analyzers are through your laboratory information system. At the very same time, the manner on how my analyzer will also communicate to me the results that they were able to gather or that we are able to measure is also through the laboratory information system. So all the data, okay, now all the data, all the information that has been um, measured and that has been retrieved, okay, from a particular patient can all be curated and all stored into the information system more specifically in your cloud okay in your cloud so please do remember that laboratory information system nowadays plays a very important role when it comes to um increasing the efficiency and effectiveness of your laboratory first and foremost um it is because um a lot of the man uh, manpower are no longer focused on retrieving your results, no longer focus writing down your results or writing down a lot of things in the laboratory. Instead, they are now focused on improving the service in the laboratory rather than uh, spending hours, okay, hundreds of hours on paperwork. Okay, that's the one of the um, 
good thing about laboratory information system, it did increase the efficiency in the laboratory. And increased efficiency in the laboratory would also mean improvement when it comes to our turnaround time. So having said that now, okay, um, your laboratory information system is our way of communicating to the analyzer and the way of analyzers communicating to us. Well, that was just the beginning of laboratory information system, okay? That was just the, the beginning of your laboratory information system. So before, it's just merely into commanding your machine and your machine giving out the, measured, the measurement or the results that they were able to take. But now, your laboratory information system now encompass not only your laboratory, but your whole hospital. That's why we also have your hospital information system in which from patient registration to your billing up until to your um, accounting, even your inventories, even your electronic medical records, your EMRs are all now integrated in your hospital information system. So there's a cloud, okay? There's a cloud now that will integrate, that will connect all of the um, all of the different systems in the hospital, specifically your laboratory, for example, your pharmacy, your billing, your at your uh, admissions, okay, your discharge. So all of the aspects in the laboratory, um, all the aspects in the hospital, to, to be general, are now connected with the cloud, okay? They are now connect, connected with the cloud. So I cannot overemphasize the importance here of connectivity, okay? Because of that connectivity, all of the data coming from all parts of the hospital are now integrated to one another. And having said that, since they are all integrated into one cloud, they can also exchange information. So take, for example, um, there's an information that we need coming from the pharmacy. We were not. We will now be able to communicate with the pharmacy department, to the radiology department, cardiology, card, uh, cardiology department. So any department that you can think of, we are now connected to them through the laboratory information system. So it's just like a cloud. Um, uh, um, uh, it just it's just like a cloud that underneath it are all the different systems that works together for the increased efficiency when it comes to patient care in the hospital and having said that now okay having said that now um in your screen these are the different um functionalities okay the different systems that you usually see in the hospital so this is not no longer just in the laboratory but in general these are common healthcare enterprise um, information systems that are being used. So we, we have here your ADT or your admission, discharge, and transfer. So um, its functionality, it runs the entire patient care workflow. So if the patient is to be admitted, if they are to be discharged, or if they are going to be transferred from one room to another, from in, an intensive care unit to a regular room, all the, um, all the patient care workflow are integrated in your ADT. Okay, so from registration of the patient up until the bed tracking and discharge, we're able now to monitor that. Okay, we're able to monitor that. More similarly, isn't it when back to when we are able to watch uh, movies physically, you can actually um, choose a seat, right? you can choose a seat and then you can track uh, which which chair is uh, still available in the lab or in the hospital? That's also the same thing. We're able to de to determine if there are um, full capacity already, how many beds are still vacant, how many patients can we still accommodate. So it makes the life of a lot of people in the hospital much easier. In addition to that, you also have your electronic clinical information system or your CIS. Your CIS, on the other hand, contains now, okay, contains the patient information from all the inpatient and outpatient systems in an enterprise and is used for reviewing patient data. So if you're a fan of um, Gray's Anatomy, you'll now see them using their laptop or using their um, iPads, okay, using their iPads in um, checking the laboratory result. Um, these are these are now the charts that we consider. So before we do have your physical, your paper made chart. Now we actually have your CIS or your clinical information system, where all of the records, all of the information of your patient with regards to their management, with regards to their diagnosis, with regards to all the things that they have, okay, are all integrated here. 
Okay? A much similar aspect of your CIS is your EMR. I'll skip the LIS first. Okay? Your EMR. Your electronic medical record is a chronologically ordered paperless chart that summarizes the clinical history and the diagnostic test results that has been made from the patient. So your CIS, uh, your CIS, this contains um, all information of your patient, like mo more of the demographics, okay, more of the demographics. And then your EMR, these are now um, health-related aspects of your patient. So these are um, the initial diagnosis, the clinical history, and also your diagnostic test result that has been made to your patient. So if you can remember um, in your HIS before, there are different types of data that are being um, taken from our patient and being incorporated to your LIS. So their allergies, their um, medical history, okay? So all of those records are um, all integrated in your EMR. And the good thing about this is that um, before, if you're going paperless, um, of course, if you if you do have your paperless, you still have to go to the nursing um, nursing station so that you'll be able to get the charge of your patient. But now it can even be sent to you electronically. Okay, of course, uh, we still maintain confidentiality of your data. So aside from that, we also have here. Okay, let's go back um, one point upward. So you also have here your laboratory information system. So your LIS is an electronic data processing and information management func that functions necessarily for laboratory operations. So later on, we'll be talking about the laboratory information system um, function and also the information flow when it comes to the laboratory because that is our main concern for today. So just like what I was discussing in the beginning of our um, meeting, okay, um, your LIS, your laboratory information system, allows us to not only communicate with the outside system of the laboratory, but most importantly, it allows a seamless con uh, communication within the laboratory, okay, within the laboratory. Later on, I'll be showing you a video on how well it, if a laboratory is fully automated with um, laboratory information system, it would work wonders in the laboratory. Now, finally, we also have here your um, EDW or your enterprise data warehouse. Your enterprise data warehouse, on the other hand, is also sim is similar to your CIS, except that the information is utilized for research through using databases and data analysis tools to uncover hidden patterns and relationship in the data. And right now, okay, this is a booming study in a field of research, which we call data mining. So data mining, okay, data mining is actually um, a dry laboratory, a dry experiment to be considered now um, in most field of research. So what is um labor what do we mean by enterprise data warehouse your um enterprise data warehouse i don't know if some of my students from his still remember this but this is the time where all of the things um all of the i i was not able to handle your lecture pala okay so it's it was the second year right now so when it comes to your um when it comes to your date enterprise data warehouse all of the data coming from all systems in the hospital are all integrated to one another and here, we are able to apply, if you are a familiar with data science, we're able now to come up with rationalization and conclusion based on the information from our patient. Take for example, I'll give you one. So take for example, most of your patients who are coming in in the laboratory, um, take for example, a particular locale, most of them has um, increased population of teenage pregnancy. So you would see that pattern in the in the hospital. You would see that pattern on your data that there's an increased um increasing number of teenage pregnancy. And with that information, you can now you are now able to see that most probably in this particular locale there are no um reproductive health bill um seminars or protocols or even um uh, sem uh, seminar or education that is being given to the population. That's why um, there's an increasing number of um, teenage pregnancy. And the very same thing when it comes to your, I know, when it comes to your, in a particular um, urban urban 
um, residents, there's an increased number, especially right now, most probably right now in the uh, in the time of pandemic where all of us are working from home. So there were there will be an increase um, increased cases of um, health related uh, problems with regards to your um, weight. Diba? When it comes to your weight, when it comes to your stress, when it comes to your mental health. Because again, there's a particular pattern. And that's the beauty when it comes to data mining. And that is the beauty when it comes to data science. All those um, all those data that are gathered around, you're able to come up with a conclusion. You're able to come up with a, a visual that would explain a particular phenomenon. Okay? A particular phenomenon in the... Um, in the not only in the laboratory, but in the community in general. And finally, um, you also have here your billing systems, okay? So when it comes to your billing system, it receives information on charges and or test performed to calculate charges to your patient insurance. So um, um, I don't know if you notice, we do not uh, maintain a particular list of um, things that has been done from your patient. Okay, we don't have a list like that. Um, instead, all the things that are being um, done to your patient is being charged to their account. Okay, it's more like um, it's more like a I don't know it's more like a baggage counter, if you would say, or the cashier. Um, you, you take all you need and then when before you leave, they'll scan them all and so that you would know how much you'd pay. Similarly, in the laboratory, okay, so we um, all the things that is to be done to your patient will be done, will be performed, and then before the patient is discharged or transferred, they will be able to, they would have to pay for the bills that they were able to incur during the, their stay in the Hospital. So these are the usual laboratory information system. Actually, hospital information system, if you would, if you may, because it's not just focused on the laboratory. Now, if we're gonna narrow it down to the laboratory, what are the usual steps in the lab in the laboratory that would require your laboratory information system? Perhaps most of you would think, um, since I was mentioning about communication with your analyzers, it would be focused more on the analysis of your results and perhaps you can also think of um, the releasing of the results but in reality all the parts of your clinical laboratory workflow are involved are are involving your laboratory information system now so from the pre-analysis the analysis post-analysis and even the management afterwards they are all um, integrated through your laboratory information system now, even patient registration is already um, done through the laboratory information system. So gone are the days that we have to fill out lengthy papers. So right now, you will just have to fill out or be interviewed for the patient registration, even test ordering. Test ordering is like ordering using your Shopee, your Lazada, your Food Panda, your Grab. You just simply... Um, type or you simply click on the um, test that you would want, especially if you're a doctor, you just simply request that and it will be performed to your patient. Aside from that, you can also co have customized requisitions, especially for outreach clients, okay, for outreach client. Aside from that, uh, it would also allow you, it would also allow you to have the phlebotomy draw list. So you would know uh, what are the different tests? You would know what, who are the different patients that you need to um, collect samples with. You already have a barcoded collection labels and aliquot labels. So, sir, what do you mean by collection labels and aliquot labels? So, collection labels, these are, take for example, um, I extracted blood from a patient. The tube that I have is the collection tube itself. Okay, but when I move to the laboratory, I need to aliquot it. Why ali why do we call it aliquot? Remember, in clinical chemistry, we separate the plasma or the serum immediately from the red blood cell, okay, so that we can prevent any further metabolism of the RBC. So once you remove your uh, your serum or your plasma, you transfer it into a diff you transfer that into a different test tube. And that in itself now is already your aliquot. So you also have to need, you'd also need to have a proper labels for your aliquot that would correspond to the labels that are found on your main collection tube. 
okay, to your main collection too. So aside from your pre-analysis, as you can see, um, we can say that the pre-analytic, the pre-analytical when it comes to the patient preparation, patient registration, patient identification, and even in your patient or your specimen collection, it is being governed by your laboratory information system. Uh, more so, when it comes to your analysis, your instrument work list, so it is um, your laboratory information system serves as the interface and allow us to automatically download or upload information into the machine or out of the machine. So um, we also have your manual work list, a manual results entry. Your, you can um, choose whether to manually enter the work list. When we say work list, um, you can manually select the different tests to be performed and you can also manually um, retrieve okay, the results or you can simply choose the automated way. So automated results entry via an interface. So what do we mean by this? So once that a particular machine um, measure a particular analyte, it will automatically be forward to your laboratory information system and it is now ready to be printed. So it allows um, easier um, validation of your results. So whether that is manual or automatic release, it would allow us to um, have a better and a faster validation when it comes to your results. And most importantly, when it comes to laboratory information system, you can also have a better way on analyzing your quality control, specifically your intra-laboratory quality control. So in the laboratory, okay, in the laboratory in your ClinChem 1, you will be performing a manual uh, preparation of your um quality control table together with uh, the identification of the different errors or rules that have been violated according to Westgard. So in a laboratory information system, it is automatically being generated by your machine. You would sim the only thing that you would do then would be to read it and to interpret it. Even the errors, they would be able to flag the errors already. You'd be able to know which one are errors, which one are not. Okay, which one are errors, which one are not. So that's the good thing about your um, laboratory, okay, laboratory information system. Aside from that, it also allow us, okay, it, it would also allow us to even, okay, to even um, control, okay, your post-analytical seamlessly. So from the requisition-based patient reports, okay, whether that is a final or a partial result, we will be able to release that to your, your doctors immediately. And most importantly, okay, you have a cumulative patient report, okay? You have a cumulative patient report. So delta checking would be easier through the help of your laboratory information system. Aside from that, okay, you can easily correct reports, okay? You can easily re uh, correct reports, and you can also, okay, you can also, um, if you're the doctor, you can easily create a result inquiry. So during my time, I would ex we would experience um, doctors who are already in the laboratory really um, waiting for the results. So they won't leave your side not until you give them a result. So sometimes that's the case when it, when with our doctors, but you know sometimes um they think that the measurement of your samples are that easy okay that's why they would wait there okay they, they would wait there and it's really a, a lot of pressure for medical technologists for those times okay so aside from that of course you also have your electronic uh, reporting to external interfaces so interfaces rather interfaces so you can um you can communicate it to the billing so that um, they would know what are the tests that have been performed um, from your patient. And of course, when it comes to your management um, here, you have your pending and incomplete list. You're able to know um, what is the turnaround time from the request of the, the test up until the release of the result, workload statistics. You're able to know what are the reagents that you need to order more frequently. You also have your ad hoc reporter, right? Report writer. So you're able to report all um uh what do you call this? Incident reports. Ayan. Incident reports in the laboratory. And finally, your CIS 
and instrument integrity monitoring tool. So when we say um, um, instrument integrity, we're also able to lock the or limit okay, the access of people to the information of your patients or anyone from the laboratory. Okay, so hopefully um, this were this was able to give you. I was able to give you a picture of how laboratory information system works um, in the laboratory. Okay, so let's go to the information flow. Okay, so usually this is the common information flow in the laboratory. So you have your patient registration, your order test, ordering order test. You can use it in, in the collection of sample, you re, when you receive a sample, when you run a sample, your review result, your release report, and even when you report now your results. So let's go through this um, information flow one by one. And I'm just going to discuss the important things about this information flow uh, as indicated in your um, Henry's. So when it comes to your um, patient registration or identification, always remember this people of the Philippines, um, patient registration is always and forever be, uh, would be the most critical step in any workflow. So if you misidentify a patient, if you misidentify a person, that would, that would completely mess up your system. Now, I that would completely mess up your system. So right now, when it comes to patient registration, a newer technology that is being applied is your radio frequency identification or your RFID. So similarly, isn't it? If you're if you already have traveled using your RFIDs, diba? Um, you don't have to interact with anyone anymore when you are doing your toll fee. So your there is a system, there are specialized camera that are able to identify your car. So more simi similarly, when it comes to your patient registration and identification, um, usually the RFID are in the form of your ID bands. Okay, we're able to monitor um, your patient. We're able to monitor um, and identify your patient in the laboratory. Um, more so. Okay, when it comes to the laboratory information system, we already have what we call your smart label. Okay, so puti pa yung label smart. Okay, so we have your smart label. So in your smart label, it actually have three components. First is a human readable information. So up until this day, even though we use barcode, we can use QR code, there are still human readable information like the name of the patient, the time of collection, the time and date who is the phlebotomist who collected the date of birth of your patient so that we can still counter check it with our system. So, okay. Aside from that, you also have your barcode. So if the human readable information is for the human, the barcode is actually for the computers, for your machines. They're able to read um, the labels using your barcode. And aside, at the same time, it also have an integrated circuit or IC chip with memory um, on the barcode. So later on, when you go to the, I'll show you a video later on of the full implementation of an automated uh, laboratory. So you'll be able to see why integrated circuit chip is also important in the smart label. Okay. So moving forward, aside from the patient registration, just like what I was mentioning, um, in your test orders, you can select test. Okay. Uh, you're, you're able to select test electronically and it's being sent to the LIS. So take, for example, um, the doctor is in the 11th floor and the laboratory is in the ground floor. So they will be, uh, they will be able to um, select the test that they would need. You would just be able to select the different tests that they would um, require for their patient to be requested. And then once your patient went to the laboratory, it's now sync. Okay. It is now sync. And then the, the phlebotomist will just be collecting the sample for your patient. I hope we're clear with that. And speaking of sample collection and labeling, um, we're not going to talk about automated sample collection here because up until this day, uh, medical technologists, humans, okay, are still collecting blood from our patient. But right now, uh, usually we do not, we no longer write or we no longer label personally the um, the test tubes. Why? Because the, we already are using your printed label. So as you can see here, this is an example of your smart label. So you have here the um, the medical record number, the name, the I, the other ID, okay, for identification. What is the tube type? So this is an SS tube, serum, uh, a yellow tube. You know, the collection, the collection date and time. You have the test. 
Okay, what is the test that is um what is the test for this particular sample? And you also have the accession number. So here, as you can see, people, this is an example of a smart label. Um, as a person, me, I would I would be able to still identify the the, the tube, the, the sample. My machine can also identify the tube and the sample. So simple, okay, but um, why is it important? Because it's a counter-checking mechanism for our uh, medical technologies and also for your machine. Okay, so um, as you can see, automation would actually cause less human interaction when it comes to your sample. And the reason for that is um, lesser human interaction or lesser human interference when it comes to your sample, when it comes to your um, samples, your agents would actually limit um, errors in the laboratory. Okay. So now, um, once you are able to collect your sample, we're now ready to perform the test. So in performing your test, this can also be done um, either um, semi-automated or fully automated. So when I say semi-automated, these are uni unidirectional analyzer communication. So meaning to say, um, the input of a particular test is manual. So take, for example, me, I would have to... Uh, manually select every single test that I need for this machine to run. But the good thing about this is that the, uh, the, the reporting of result will be automatic. Okay, The reporting of result will be automatic. So once that the machine was able to record a particular measurement, it will now be sending the results to the LIS and we can now review it. We can now double check it, delta check it before releasing to our physicians or to our patients. Okay, that is the unidirectional. Most of the laboratory here in the Philippines are actually doing unidirectional. Even though um, we have an automated machine, it's still the medtech that chooses and monitor the tests that are being um, selected for the um, being selected for the um for the specimens in the laboratory on the other hand we also have the bi-directional analyzer communication so here both your in the input of the test and the reporting of the results are all automated so meaning to say um you simply scan the barcode like this one the one that uh i we i showed you a while back so once you scan this the machine will already be able to re read and will be able to be programmed that it would need to um it would need to measure your, um, take for example, your protein, okay, your blood, urea, nitrogen, your protein, and even your amylase in the sample. So the your patient now, okay, the your patient sample will be able to identify, or rather, your machine would be able to identify what type of test will be performed in this particular, okay, in this, um, particular specimen, okay. So that is the two methods ha, or two um, communication when it comes to um, the laboratory. We have your unidirectional and also your bidirectional analyzer communication. Okay? Communication. So having said that, now let's go to the releasing of your results. Okay? So in the releasing of your results, if before we do have the paper medical records now we simply have your electronic um health record or your e h r or electronic medical record or your e m r okay so in the releasing of your result it is now on online releasing it is faster and somehow secure as well okay it is also secure uh sir what do you mean by integrated panic values okay so in the laboratory, we have this thing called um, panic value, okay? So what are panic value? Panic value are certain levels of analyze, either highly, um, abnormally high or abnormally low levels that would alert the medical technologist that once we, um, once we are able to measure or record a particular value and it's considered to be a panic value, we need to immediately report it to the doctor. So usually, take for example, um, the turnaround time would take four hours. But upon measuring it, okay, in the first two hours, you're able to see that the patient's result um, is extremely high. 
Okay? Take for example, your potassium. So, there's hyperkalemia and increased potassium would cause your heart to be paralyzed, your muscles to be paralyzed. One of the muscles there would be your heart and that, and that would cause the cessation of your heart um, to beat. So, your patient would die. So, if you experience it in the laboratory, you need to report that immediately um, to the doctor so that they can mitigate um, and they can resolve the condition of your patient immediately. So when it comes to the integrated panic value, these are the moment where your system, your laboratory information system, would send signal or what which we call in the laboratory your flags. Okay. So take for example, there is an abnormally high. We would see a flag. Okay, that would um, prompt us that this particular analyte is abnormal. Okay, either abnormally high or abnormally low. So that is what we call your flaggings. Okay, so those are your warning signs in the laboratory. So once that is also integrated in your LIS, it will be able to prompt you. It can the machine can alarm, and it can prompt the medical technologist to rerun the test or to report the results immediately. Now speaking of reporting. So remember that when it comes to your de um, electronic data, um, we already have a de electronic data repository. So just like what we were talking about, um, your electronic warehouse data, your electronic, um, what do you call this again? Your enterprise data warehouse, okay? Your enterprise data warehouse in which all of the data are collated to one another and we're able to come up with an interpretation on how this particular data are the way they are. Okay, and finally, of course, you also have your electronic medical record in which, especially right now, okay, the telemedicine is being uh, utilized. Uh, telemedicine is very um, widely used now in this time of pandemic. This would actually help us. Okay, this would actually help us um, to better the service or to improve the service when it comes to um, reporting and also your consultation in the laboratory. So now I'll show you a video. I hope um, the video would play. I hope the video, the audio would also play. So I'll show you a video of how beautiful a fully automated laboratory would be. Um, and when I say a fully automated from their, from the receiving of their sample, once they receive the sample and up until the release of the results, um, you would see the automation that is in here. Okay. So let's watch this video. We're not watching Avengers. <laughs> You enter your samples and it will automatically sort. Okay, the machine will be the one to sort um, your specimen. Okay. So it's not entering in, um, in a conveyor um, conveyor belt. So it also has an automatic centrifuge screen. So it automatically separates the samples. Plasma in the saloon from the patterns now. And then this stopper, this is now the after the centrifugation, 
um, the removal of your stopper or your um, top. Okay, so why they are doing the stopper, perhaps some of you are wondering, um, will the tubes be lost? No, they don't be lost because we have the particle system. There, um, I think we're trying to do the um, alicotes now. Okay, so they are trying to label the alicot tubes. Okay, okay. where the sample from the mother tube will be transferred now to the alicot tubes. Okay, there you go. Get your private tips. You go back. Master it. And now, sample transfer table. We are now going to their respective section. Medical care, even even my. Once the analysis is done, you will now restock it or recap your samples which are to be stored. Okay, so that was your um. So that was an example of a fully automated um laboratory from the sorting of the samples up until the sorting of the samples after being run in the uh, laboratory. So in Saint Luke's um Saint Luke's BGC or uh, in Saint Luke's Global, okay, uh Global City, they do have this. So. When we went there, um, they would just um, put all the specimens collected on a, con a conveyor uh, conveyor belt, and then it will now start to scan, and it will start to deliver the different samples into the specific sections in the laboratory. And it was actually quite ama amazing watching it actually happen. So imagine the amount of science, the amount of robotics um, that is in there. That's why... In the future, if you have plans, you can also pursue you can also pursue biomedical engineering um, as your postgraduate um, programs. Okay, but finally, as to 
to end this discussion for today, uh, let's also talk about bioinformatics. So bioinformatics um, studies how information is stored in biological systems, specifically um, our genetic code. So um, you, with the help of bioinformatics, we're able to organize data from a molecular level to a macromolecular level with a large part of focus being on DNA, RNA, and protein sequences. Sequences. So here, um, right now, um, the dawn of omics, um, as, they, as they call it, okay? Um, omics, genomics, proteinomics, metabolomics. So all of those omics now are starting to be, um, to gain popularity. Okay, and we are able to somehow um, understand all this data using bioinformatics. So in general, bioinformatics is, is like a translator of all of the uh, all of the nucleotide sequences that we're able to gather from a DNA. Take for example, you sequence a particular DNA for you to be able to understand that you need to compare that into a bioinformatics machine. So you have to compare that to different biobanks. Okay, so take for example, um, this particular variant of a bacteria or a virus, you compare it to the one that is recorded in the biobank so that you would know if it is a similar variant or a similar virus or a new or a novel virus already. Okay, so that's the use of bioinformatics, okay, in the laboratory. And with the help of laboratory information system, we're also able to integrate this um, bioinformatics in the laboratory. So I hope I'm clear and hopefully you did learn something new today about your um, laboratory information system. You appreciated the beauty of the automation in the lab. And most importantly, you're also able to have an introduction of bioinformatics. Do not worry because um, on your succeeding semester, you will be having your molecular diagnostics and bioinformatics will be discussed there further. But for now, that's it for me. So that's it for our discussion for today. So thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on our next discussion. I'll see you on our next video. Goodbye.